All right. Well, I would like to welcome everyone to the Master of Arts in Music Industry um, information session. We are going to cover a lot of content and ultimately hope this will help you determine if our program is going to be a good fit for you. My name is Rashonda Butler. I am one of the student advocates here at the University of Miami, U Online Division. Um, if you should decide to apply and are accepted into the program, um, I will work with you closely during your first year of class to help you get acclimated to the online environment. Uh, we do have a lot of content to cover tonight, and we do hope that you will find this information useful. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. We understand that your time is very valuable, and we want to be courteous of that. This session will last approximately 45 minutes. If for any reason you head out or if you're coming in late, don't worry, you're going to be getting a recording of this um, later in the week. Again, we're going to cover a lot of information tonight with regards to the courses that you'll be taking, the structure. You're also going to hear from faculty within the program as well as alumni. Uh, we would like to make sure that this session is specifically geared for you. So if there's a specific question that you have, for these panelists, you will see a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. So please feel free to utilize that. We would love to cover any questions that you have, but we do ask that we utilize this time as efficiently as possible. So please try and make sure that these questions are geared towards the content and structure of the program. If you have specific questions with regards to application items or financial aid, be sure to connect with one of our enrollment advisors. They look forward to speaking with you on an individual basis and will help you through the process. Um, I'm thrilled to have Andrea with us this evening. Andrea Jimenez, please go ahead, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Rashonda. Appreciate you as always. No Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us this evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, we are so excited to be here with you and to, to discuss our online Masters of Arts in Music Industry, amazing program. I can't say enough about it. Mm -hmm. And without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let our amazing panel mixed with our program director, assistant program director, professors, and some really cool alumni to talk a little bit more about themselves and introduce themselves. So without further ado, Sarona, can we get started with you? Uh, sure. Um, so, hi, I know I'm just a small little square. We will come out of screen share soon. Uh, so, I'm the director of the music industry program here at the Frost School. Um, I've been with Frost since 2006 um, and oversee both the online and the on-campus versions of the degree, which is an important thing to understand. Um, and I, I also uh, work in the music industry, too, and we can talk more about that in a little bit. Thank you, Serrano. Guillermo, can we hear yes, from you? Yes, hi. Yes, of course. Thank you, uh, Andrea. Uh, my name is Guillermo Page. I'm the assistant director of the music industry program. Uh, I've been at Frost uh, for about five years now. And, um, you know, I'm basically the, the, the classes that I teach are the ones related to marketing and, uh, um, you know, advanced topics in music industry. So we can talk about more of those uh, when the time comes. Thank you, Guillermo. Ray? Can we hear from you, please? Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm Ray Sanchez. I'm one of the associate deans and also a professor in the music industry program. I, um, I've been here since 2001, but before that, uh, fully involved in the music industry full time and still involved. Uh, I teach copyright and I teach entrepreneurship in this program. Thank you, Ray, for that. Appreciate you. And now to our fantastic alumni. Christine, can we start with you, please? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I am Christine McDonald. I am actually a graduate um, from the summer of 2023. I'm currently working up to be a music supervisor. I'm currently working for marketing. And um, I had a really great time working in this program and really great to share uh, my experiences with you guys here tonight. Thank you, Christine. And last but definitely not least, Will. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good to see you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Um, yeah, I'm Will Best. Um, I live and work in New York City at the moment. Um, I just graduated from the program last December, so it's still very fresh for me, and I'm excited to talk to you all about it today. Love it, Will. Thank you so much. So without further ado, we're at, like, let's get to talking. Um, let's start with 
Guillermo, let's start. Let's start with you. Talk to us. <laughs> um, talk to us about. You spoke about your role within the program. You touched upon your course, your courses, I should say, um, mm -hmm. and how they have all to do with marketing. Let, let's. let's how does that really flow very nicely into what is our full package of the Music Industry Masters of Arts program with us, right? We have a nice curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us a little bit more about what your courses look like and truly how they enrich the curriculum overall, which they do, but um, we want to hear from you. I, I think that, that thank you, Andrea. I think that, that marketing is is essential for the business. It's a critical part of, of the, of the uh, operations of, whether you're working on a record label, you're working on publishing, working on live entertainment, marketing is essentially touching every little part of the business. And what we have developed for, for our online program is what our students see in the in-person program related to marketing. So we give them concepts, we uh, walk them through the basic elements they need to know about, about marketing, and then eventually they put together their own marketing plan. They'll learn how to put together a plan that would allow them to, um, you know, fulfill their goals in terms of, of, of marketing. So we, we talked a little bit of everything in, in our, in our uh, course. Uh, also, as part of the course, uh, the students uh, get certifications uh, for, uh, for Google Ads and for, uh, for YouTube. Those are uh, certifications that Google and YouTube offer um, to the people at large, but we include them in our courses and uh, those certifications, students can use them in their um, resumes, uh, actually, when they're looking for job opportunities. And, and it's something that we also help students when they're looking for job opportunities, check out the requirements. And sometimes, depending on the area, specifically in marketing, those certifications will give them the extra edge to get job opportunities. That's amazing, Guillermo. And not to mention just the skills overall that the course yes. provides, but amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christine, can you talk to us a little bit about um about the courses that you took in our in the program? Give us highlights, ones that stood out, any projects that you worked on that were that really stuck with you. Um, and let's get a little bit into that, please, your perspective. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, one for sure that stuck out a lot to me was the entrepreneurship for musicians. And that was actually with the uh, very own Professor Sanchez here. And with that one, we really got to learn how to apply business concepts to really anything, any essential business. It could be music. It could be anything. And we had a final project where we created a business plan for it. And we actually um, did like a elevator pitch video for it, which was pretty cool. Um, I've never done an elevator pitch, but it was really great practice, I would say, because you definitely want to be prepared with when you meet people, what you're going to say to them, right? So you've got to have something already planned and practice ahead of time. And it was um, really awesome because I actually came up with a real actual idea that I wanted to implement for business that I wanted to start. So that was really nice. And actually going off of Professor Page, his uh, marketing class, um, which was actually my my final class that I took before I graduated. And um, that one really helped me to actually apply right now what I'm doing, because what I'm doing right now, I'm working for public relations for a punk rock company. And what I'm doing right now is uh, designing EPKs for rock bands. So really what I learned in um, Professor Page's class really definitely helped to apply uh, to this as well, because it's all marketing. It's very important um, to apply that for actual musicians and bands. Oh. Thank you, Christine. That was awesome. Will, Will jump in here for me, please. Uh, in uh, along the same along the same topic, we're talking about courses and what you like, the highlights, anything that stuck out from what Christine said, and if you can echo or please your perspective. Well, they both both. Christine and Guillermo beat me to talking about his marketing class. Nice. Um, you know, I think just an overall takeaway without, uh, you know, reiterating too much, um, the practical application of the courses is really what it drives this whole degree. And courses like Guillermo's <clears throat> marketing course, as well as Professor Elton's copyright course, which I was lucky enough to take early on, um, you really understand how to put in place everything you're being taught throughout this program and courses like copyright and marketing, when you approach it, you might think, oh, I have a general sense of this, 
but with our with the amazing professors at this course and these this whole degree has you're really given an opportunity to learn the nitty-gritty things of what they've done and what they've learned and that to me was huge and one quick example was i remember in saron elton's class we were you know we learned for six weeks about the nitty-gritty laws and copyright section one 172 whatever you want to talk about and then she dropped in at the very end, here's a critical thing that happened. And I also happen to be one of the leaders in this whole development. Here's an article that was written about and being able to see how a teacher that is directly in front of you massively impacts the industry in a real way. That That is something that you can't really sub substitute for. And it, it's a great additive to these courses. Thank you for that, Will. So, Ray, Serona, you're both reference here, and Guillermo, you are as well. But, Serona, I, I, I want to come to you. Talk, talk to us in terms of, like, the courses and how, I mean, truly, like, enriching. It really provides um, a, a nice curriculum and, and the rigors there, but then the flexibility to choose really cool electives are there, too. And then the core content overall, though was properly structured. Yeah, or let's start with the curriculum so people understand what exactly Please. this degree is. Um, so, you know, we, we have, um, this degree is flexibly made up of a core of some music industry courses we feel everybody who's pursuing a career should have under their belt. Then you also get to take some other courses that, you know, are music industry related, but you might you know, be more passionate about one particular topic or another. It's a very diverse sector, you know, of the entertainment industry. And then you have general electives, right, um, where you're choosing from other online courses that we happen to have available that, you know, um, maybe are not specifically music industry courses, um, but they're, they're other courses, right? That's how our fundamental curriculum is comprised of core music industry courses, music industry electives, and just electives. Um, and I think a critical point, and, and forgive me if you were going to get there with this question, but just to kind of get these these really like fundamentals out there, it's the same curriculum as our on-campus program. It's the same. The delivery mechanism is obviously different, right? You're taking an asynchronous online class instead of an in-person class, but the courses and the course content is the same. And, and we, you know, we do that. That's very purposeful. That's intentional. Um, it's one big Frost School of Music family. You're an alumni of the music industry program at the Frost School period. And you're going to be out there working with other alumni of the Frost School Music Industry Program. We don't say like, oh, well, you're, you're an alumni of the online degree, like as if that's somehow different, right? Um, the mechanism is different, but the fundamentals of it are the same, including the relationships you'll build with faculty, fellow students, and alumni that you're going to meet out there in the working world. So um, some of the courses you've heard a bit about, you know, um, one of the first courses you start with is music copyright. And that's actually taught by Professor Sanchez. I teach recorded music operations. I think that's the class that Will's thinking of. Um, so the, that's okay. The con copyright class is fundamental to understanding the music industry. You have to start with understanding music copyright, okay? And then some of the other core courses you will take is a course about the record business and a course about music publishing. Um, those are some of the fundamental courses you must take. But then you can get more into other topics like music licensing, like music marketing, like these other topics, depending on which kind of direction you think your career might, might head to. And because we are so flexible, there's plenty of room to take all of those music industry electives and count them as either music industry electives or just electives. So, you know, there's, there's, it's, we're proud of the flexibility of the program. Um, because the thing is, you might start off working for a record label and later end up working for a publishing company or start off working for a publishing company and then end up, you know, doing marketing, helping artists manage, you manage artists. Careers are long. They take windy paths. You don't necessarily know where you're going to end up at the outset. And, and that's just the last thing I'll say is, you know, our curriculum intentionally is 
varied and touches on all these areas. You know, some music industry programs out there may be heavily on marketing and you learn almost nothing about copyright and licensing, right? We think that to be really well-rounded professionals in this industry and have a long, successful career, you need to understand the fundamentals of all of these different parts of the industry. Even if you're purely working marketing, you know, all those awesome images you see in marketing, you have to know the copyright law to understand what images you can use in your marketing, right? It's all interconnected. So the curriculum is um, designed with all of that in mind. Shona, thank you. Amazing. You killed it, like always. Um, and you mentioned, yeah, it, it's, it's super interconnected. And Will, that's why you got, because one was good and the other was awesome. So, I mean, it makes sense. Ray, your copyright course has been referenced multiple times. And yeah. Anything that may have resonated from what Corona and, and, and the team have said. Well, I mean, just, you know, doubling down a bit on what Serona just said. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there are fundamentals. And, and without copyright, we don't have a music industry. The modern music industry really begins with copyright happening in the world in the mid 19th century when copyright finally came to music. It's the birth of the modern music industry. You don't have publishing, you don't have record labels, you don't have all this other stuff if you don't have those fundamental protections. So understanding that is key. But I also want to stress another point here, which is, um, you know, we started music industry education as we know it today, all the way back in 1966, uh, six, 1966. Yeah. Yep. Um, and um, as a result, our DNA is very deep. It goes way back. Uh, and, uh, and we have uh, alums in basically every corner of this industry. It, it, it's funny, we call it the music industry, but it's really music industries, plural, because e even within the same company, what someone in one section does, like the creatives in A&R, couldn't be more different than what the folks, you know, in, in the back room doing the administrative side of A&R are doing. It's completely different worlds. Um, so therefore the flexibility of our program, it's not prescribed, it's not check off the boxes. Um, different people have different feelings as to where they think they're gonna go, but it'd be wise to explore something else, maybe outside of your comfort zone, because you never know. This is a huge industry in terms of possibilities, but it's actually not that big in terms of number of people. Um, and, and what's funny, you've been in it long enough, like I have, you get to know a lot of folks. And, and, and uh, while they may be doing one thing or another at a different time, uh, they're there. We have an alum who has uh, worked in basically every area of this business, in publishing, in the record label side, uh, in the music products industry, and now heavily involved in the live music industry. So that's not unusual. Um, so th that's uh, one point. The other thing I I'd like to bring up is, um, again, going back to that network, because we go back so far, um, it is a real thing, the, the network of our students. It is also true that you're part of the same program, you're taking the same courses with the same professors, um, and that means you're gonna have a lot in common with folks that are out there. Um, if you live in LA, live in Nashville, live in New York, live in Atlanta, live wherever, you're going to find um, someone that's connected to us in the music industry. There's no question about it. And uh, that's extremely important because this is a relationship business, um, ultimately. So, and, and then the last thing I'll say is that every one of my colleagues is an industry veteran and more than a veteran, also current warrior. <laughs> so, um, uh, so these are people that, that, that really know what they're talking about. And when you mention their name in the industry, it resonates, it's real. Thank you for that ring. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You know, um, I'm going to come to, I'm gonna come to you now, Christine, because uh, Serona mentioned just in terms of like the mode, the only thing that's different is the modality. You're online with us, but it, everything is still the same. Um, the length of the courses, we also have a difference in that, right? It's seven weeks. We have two seven week classes that you take separately, right? Session one and session two, as we call it. Um, talk to us a little bit, talk, talk to us about your experience with the seven week model and how you were able to handle it. I mean, you both, you and Will did fantastic, but 
how was it that you were able to manage that seven week session one, one course, and then seven week session two, the other course? What did that feel like to you when you were coming to school with us online in that kind of a sequencing? Uh, yes, sure. It, I feel it was very well paced for it to be seven weeks long. And also too, with the amount of work that was required to do, I felt that that was really great. Um, it wasn't too overwhelming, um, especially since some of us still had other jobs, maybe some of us working full-time, working part-time somewhere else and still taking the classes online. So I think that that was really great um, for me because I worked full time and it was really hard for me to actually find a program where I could take classes online and still be able to work at my job. So I, I really appreciate um, that this program did offer asynchronous learning um, because that otherwise it would have been a really difficult time for me. Um, but then um, with the breaks between the two programs, so your two sessions, the first session and then the second seven week session, um, you had like a bit of a break to kind of like rest before the second session started, um, which was great. Also, um, it's also a good time to just kind of have that downtime uh, reset and then get ready for the next class. So I just really love the pacing of it. I didn't felt like it was too rushed at all. Thank you for that, Christine. Will, can we get your perspective, please, in terms of the seven weeks and? Yeah, absolutely. All very well said. I agree with it. Um, and in addition, I was working full time while doing this degree, which you know presents its own uh, conflicts, especially time management. And I think any grad school degree you're going uh, to pursue, time management is a huge part of that. And what this course really promotes oh, is self-oriented time management. And with the seven weeks, you know, you really are also at the beginning of the semester, given your whole uh, course lined out for you with dates of submission times, and here's what's going to happen when, and it's very clear, it's laid out, and it's very stuck to. So, you know, when you're working full-time, or if you're if you're not, you, you have the ability to plan with this degree and do the work. Um, which enables you to do it stress-free and really pursue the passion of this degree, which is so much of the reason why I think we all pursue it. Because um, if we didn't love it, we wouldn't want to do it. So being able to do what you love stress-free is huge. And I think the seven weeks with a break, who doesn't love a break in the midst of, you know, a lot of thinking and a lot of hard work, it serves a lot of, you know, many benefits. But really, by the time you get to the one week of break, you're not really, you're not swimming under uh, crazy currents. You're not super underwater you're ready to tackle the next semester before it even comes because of the pace. And for me, that was, that was absolutely huge and very fundamental to the success I had. Thank you both. Appreciate that. And I did have a follow-up because with, with those seven weeks, and since it is asynchronous, what did, because we are very big about making sure that even if it's asynchronous, like our faculty, our professors are there, right? You email, we have synchronous optional virtual office hours. Um, many of them have them in the evening time because we all, our students do most, mostly work, work full time. So when it comes to that synchronous piece of you being able to actually connect with the professors or the, the um, them being able to, you being able to email them, get a response back, how did that look like? How did that feel for you all in terms of the support that you got while you were in classes? Christine, I'll start with you. Yeah, there was never a time where I felt like I couldn't be able to reach any of the professors. Any of them was definitely available for questions, whether it had been through email or through their office hour sessions. I uh, definitely felt all the support there, which was really great because I didn't felt like I was alone and like I didn't have any help or support. Definitely loved that they were available really at any time um, to schedule a time to meet, whether it be on Zoom, and then just the um, the response and the feedback during emails was really quick too. Thank you, Christine. Will any comments? Very, about? very well said. I, and it it go it's top to bottom in the organization. I mean, you yourself helped me a lot when I needed help, and you you were very quick to answer my questions. All the way from thinking about do I actually want to do this program to being as in the thick of it as I ever was. You have people from the top to the bottom of the organization there to help. And another thing that I learned and didn't really understand would be so beneficial is when you're on campus and you're with however many other people are on campus, it, it is hard to find office hours at colleges and universities in person. And that is difficult. And I experienced that. But on this online degree, because 
it is asynchronous and you always have the ability to reach out, uh, your, your messages and your efforts are never going to go unanswered, which is huge. And being able to fit help into your own schedule, having the virtual aspect of this course makes that easier for yourself and the professors. So I, I would just encourage everyone to take advantage of how beneficial it is to have that aspect of your degree offered to you. And it's always there. Thank you for that, Will. Sarona, I'm, I'm commenting you. So we, we everything was, in, our curriculum is intentional. Everything we do here is intentional. And even just as we try to, we, we will offer that synchronous component of it. And that's important to us. So if someone, if a student emails up and has, any question, has questions for you about anything, about the course or what have you, we're there. That's an intentional thing that we're doing. Um, any comments in terms of why we structured it that way? Why it's like, well, you're say synchronous, but you still got us, right? Like, cause it's still important to us. So any comments on that? Um, well, and forgive me if my lighting looks crazier and crazier. As it gets darker and darker outside, my internal lighting looks crazy. Um, no, I mean, I think the, the, the heart of the matter is that we want you to feel connected. Um, and, you know, so every class has synchronous office hours that are optional. And if you can make it great, but sometimes I know you can't. I've had plenty of classes where that office hours, because, you know, people are in different time zones all over the world. It may or may not work out for your schedule. And so dropping me an email, you know, uh, hey, you mentioned this thing in lecture 4.2. Can you go over that again? Can you point me to some extra reading? Can you help me understand how that applies to such and such, you know? Um, very happy to answer all those questions. Um, that's that's all a part of a part of the learning experience, and to just feel connected. We know it can be more difficult to feel connected when you are not coming to campus, but you know, digital technologies have really created all kinds of ways um, to feel connected. Staying in touch with your professor via email or those um, synchronous office hours is one of them. But things like following us on social media. Is really important. Our students get our weekly newsletter. It's the same newsletter that goes to our on campus students. And it is true that sometimes, you know, hey, on Thursday in room such and such, there's a guest speaker. That one you may not be able to come to. But hey, there's this internship opportunity. There's this Zoom speaker we're going to have. There's this scholarship somewhere. You know, all most of the newsletter still applies. So there's a, a lot of different ways that we help students stay connected to the program. Um, you know, including if you're going to be in town in Miami, let us know and you can come drop in on a class or have a cup of coffee with one of us. We've had plenty of students come and visit that way when school's in session, which is a good time to visit. Um, but, you know, um, it's, it's all part of feeling like you're part of this family and that you're connected to it. Thank you, Serona. Yeah, well said. Guillermo, any, any comments in terms of just being available as a professor? Let's unmute. You're on mute. Mm -hmm. I feel that, that for, for the most part, uh, those students that, that take the time to connect, to reach out, to be uh, during the office hours, to use the resources available, those are the students that, that do, do well in our program. And it's something that, um, you know, everyone needs to take advantage of that opportunity. We're here for you. We're here to work uh, with, with you with the course material. And, and um, you know, it, it's up to you to take advantage of the resources that we put at your disposal. And uh, for me, it has been a, an enjoyable experience just to get to meet the students and to, um, you know, get the questions and, and to talk about the material that we have that particular week. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good part of, I feel, that complements everything that they do on a weekly basis when they reach out and we have that conversation. And sometimes it becomes a very nice chat with other students that join at the same time. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really what helps bond every student uh, in the program. And it's, uh, it's, really, it's really great. Thank you, Guillermo, appreciate that. Ray, any comments from you? Yeah, no, um, uh, just echoing what everyone's saying. Uh, you know, I, I take a slightly different approach, but it's basically the same thing. I hold uh, weekly discussion sessions based on the current modules, but often we end up talking about um, after the session, if a student has, it, you know, uh, specific questions about their curriculum, whatever, we can talk there as well. But uh, the important thing is that there's opportunities for students to engage one on one with the professors on a, on a regular basis. Uh, but the other thing is that we're all pretty active 
nationally and even internationally. Uh, we all go to a lot of different conferences and we make sure that online students know what's happening out there. Uh, so I just uh, came back from the NAM show back in, um, well, actually now it's been a month and a half and uh, end of January, but um, we were there and uh, we uh, absolutely ran into some uh, online students that, or actually this go around former online students that happened to be at the show that already graduated and uh, connected. We had a pizza night and had some fun. And, uh, but, uh, but the main thing is that um, everyone gets to know like where we're going to be. Um, there are events that if you're going to be in this business, you should be aware of and very likely attend um, where, where, you know, music biz in the spring, uh, NAM in the winter, there are other events in the fall as well. So um, South by Southwest, different things where any of our professors may be. And uh, so that's a chance absolutely to network in those situations. Thank you, Ray. And I don't want to go without, I just, we, we got, got a question here in the Q&A. How many weeks from um, Ms. Jenkins, uh, how many weeks is the program if you decide to join during the fall semester? So in, in terms of the number of weeks, I don't have that specific answer, but I do know it's five semesters, five semesters. So you'll, you can complete this degree if you want in five semesters, taking two classes each semester in those different seven week sessions, okay? So just if you have a follow-up question, feel free to throw it in, but I didn't want to ignore that. Serona, did you have a comment on that question just in, in case, so I don't miss you? How many um, well, no, but I think we should uh, expand on what you're saying a little because that math doesn't maybe make sense. It's a 30 credit program and each course is three credits. And while you, when you take on campus classes, you're probably used to that 15 week semester, right? Well, we have these seven week semesters. So a normal fall semester actually has two fall mini semesters within it, right? And the same thing with the spring, there's two spring mini semesters and two summer mini semesters, right? And so when you say five semesters, Andrea, do you mean like, you know, five, like fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, kind of thing and in each of those mini semesters those seven week mini semesters how many classes are students typically taking in a mini semester there's a question yeah, for so, you andrea no yeah so so it, it, it traditionally it's two classes two classes each semester and yes it would be one fall spring two classes summer. each mini semester one class each mini semester so two classes total 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 together so that's two four six yep. eight ten that's it Bye. okay Thank, thank you for that clarity, though, because it's 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 important. Um, so with so so with that said, um, oh my goodness, now we're getting more questions, which is great. Oh, okay, great. So so it looks like we're getting does does once does seven weeks equal one semester? No, but we think we just cleared that up. And thank you, Serona, for that because one mini semester. Yeah, semester. The, the we the term that we use is actually session, okay. session one, session two. So fall semester okay. on campus, one semester. Um, online, it's session one and then session two. Students typically just take one class per session. Yep. Um, occasionally more than one, but we don't recommend it. We recommend just one per. And so total, um, you can actually comfortably do it uh, in a year and a half compared to two years on campus, uh, just because uh, we don't have summer breaks and things like sure. that. Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate that, Ray. And then we did. Yeah, and, and there was another question. No, yep. uh, summer sessions are the same length as everywhere, every other time. They're not crammed in um, the way they are with on campus. On campus, a summer session is kind of crammed in, but online, uh, they're the same no matter what. Thank you, Ray, for that. Will, did you have a question? I saw your hand. Um, well, I didn't mean to, but I, I oh. can add on. Yeah, please. You can comfortably do this in a year and a half. That's what I did. And that would be um, doing classes back to back to back all 10. So you're doing seven weeks. You'll have a break. You'll do another seven weeks. And that will be true until you get enough credits to finish. But correct me if I'm wrong. Every student has the opportunity to not do it back to back to back. So I think I saw a couple of Q&As about like yeah. what is the shortest amount of time? What's the average? Um, I 
not the person to answer that best, but it really is tailored to you. So it's about how quickly do you need or want to do this? And do you need or want to do it back to back to back? It's really built for you to make that decision for yourself. And especially if you're working full time or part time, that's something that's massively helpful. So I wouldn't think about it as how do I have to do this? And how is it told that I should do it? This is really a program that's built for you to make it work the best for your, your situation and for your study habits and your entire life. It's really about what you need to do. And that's what makes this program great. Awesome. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you for that clarification and everyone for joining in on these questions because it looks like the Q&A blew up. So I was like, I, we're not leaving without answer these, uh, answering these, excuse me. Um, Christine, uh, so we're, we're, we're coming up on time here and we want, I want to be conscious of it, but I want to hear from you just fi final thoughts. Why did you choose this program? Um, I mean, you're doing so amazing now and I mean, it's going to be sky's the limit. Um, sky's not the limit for sure for you, Christine. So tell us, why did you choose Frost School Online, University of Miami? Let's leave the people with some, some, some more information from you, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I chose Frost School because I felt that with it being centered in Miami, uh, there was going to be a plethora of music and just a lot of information that I would be able to gain and resources to really set myself on a path to be in music. I um, used to work in education. Well, currently still do. I, I work as a teacher um, for elementary school. But I wanted to get back into music and kind of transition my way into music business. So finding this program, while I was looking online for different programs and I saw that, hey, it's online, it's remote, it's very flexible. And also, too, it's asynchronous, like I said, working full time and having the ability to still take the classes um, and view the courses and everything like that and still be able to complete um, projects and work that was great for me as well and just um, all together the people have been really great I, I definitely love that you know with the resources available with everyone telling us like hey you know definitely reach out to these people go to these conferences if you can because it will be very very helpful and um, I will say, um, Professor Page, you actually stressed a whole lot about um, networking on LinkedIn, which has definitely helped me a whole lot. Um, I will say that's actually how I was able to actually find my first position in A&R and then now currently working in marketing. And um, yeah, I won't say that, you know, for sure that I'll just stay in that. It could change just how Professor Elton stated earlier. You know, you might start off in at a label and then you might move on to publishing. Uh, so definitely like that fluidity and just the flow of just um, being in the music industry is great. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Any final thoughts from you before we wrap up here? We definitely want to hear from our awesome alumni. Any final thoughts and why you chose the program? Yeah, absolutely. Well, going back to what Christine just mentioned and what Serena said earlier, this career, it has so many different legs to it and it's a long one. And this industry really has a massive amount of folds and crevices and cracks that you would never know existed. And uh, my career up until this point has been in live entertainment and in indie band management. And I found myself in a position where I really wanted to take my career to the next step, but I didn't know how to do that necessarily so finding a program that allowed me to stay where i was in the situation where i was working that was comfortable and very much career progressing it allowed me to take that next jump and learn everything that i need to learn so when i do get the opportunity to pursue what i really do want to pursue i'm ready i know what they're talking about and i have shared experiences with other people in the industry who have gone through a similar time and i think that this program just really enables you to, as Sharona said, understand where you want to be and mm. face after it with a full head of steam and a massive amount of support. And the variety of the courses is what I think should attract everybody. It's very unique. And that opportunity doesn't come around a lot to get education from people like the professors at U Miami. Um, so I don't mean to be cliche in saying everything, but really this you'll learn as you go through the program that it gets better and better and it'll help it helps you more and more as you go through it 
Well, thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, Serona, Ray, Guillermo, any last thoughts from our fantastic leadership? I mean, I would just say, as you're thinking about if this degree is for you, you really have to connect with what your passion is. The music industry is an extremely competitive industry. There are no guaranteed jobs. Um, and there's no better jobs because you have a master's versus a bachelor's. That's not the entertainment industry, not any entertainment industry, whether it's film, TV, anything. You pursue a degree like this because you know you must work in something that has to do with music. If you know that, then, then this is for you. But if you're like, well, I'm thinking about maybe insurance or maybe nursing or maybe this, then just don't. Because if, if you're not that sure, if you're like, oh, it could be, you know, I'm looking for job security, that's not this field. That's just not. People who are in this field usually knew young, I love music so much. And for whatever reason, I'm not going to pursue being uh, like my main job is not going to be a creator. Okay. I want to, but I must be around music. You just know it in your soul, right? If that's you, then this degree is for you. Um, and, you know, it's a competitive industry. You'll get out there. The Frost name will help open doors to try and get you interviews. But then what comes out of your mouth in those interviews is what's going to get you those jobs, right? And that's where you get that knowledge from your classes and you get that knowledge from interacting with your professors, um, you know, the Frost School name means something, but at the end of the day, it's your knowledge that's going to land you that job and then is going to build that super successful career. So, you know, we hope this is right for you. Um, but, I, you know, it's funny, I get to meet with students, potential students all the time. Um, you know, a lot of them, even undergrads and their parents, you know, that are they're in high schools. And I will never talk somebody into this degree because it's a hard road. You know, it's, it's not an easy road in the music industry. Just like you wouldn't talk somebody into being a musician or talk somebody into being an actor, you know, you wouldn't say, oh, because it's such an easy road, you know, you're, you're, it's good, you should do it. It's job security for certain. No, that's not why you get into this field. Um, but if you love it, you make it work and you have a successful career and it just comes together. So um, think about like, what are you passionate about? What topic do you want to have be the focus of your day, eight, 12 hours a day, five days a week, at least. Right. Um, you know, what, what is it that you want to be doing in this world? And if it has to be part, it has to be connected to music, then this might be the right program for you. Yeah. I just want to echo on that. Definitely. Because, you know, this you got to feel the passion. We're going to give you all the resources, all the skills. It's what, it's what you do with it. The degree uh, alone doesn't get you the job opportunity. It's what you do with all the skills that you learn and the people that you meet and how you find those relations, you know, in, in the industry. So so you just got to follow your passion. And, and in terms of our program, all the skills, all the information, you will have a nice back of track, you know, by your side uh, when you're ready to leave us. And it's what you do with it. Yeah. And I'll just chime in at the end. And hopefully there was a question from Sebastian. I hope this kind of answered your question. Right. But understand the people you've been listening to here for the last five minutes or so. These are industry insiders. And what they're really expressing is the culture of the industry and, and the culture of the, the people that are involved in these jobs. Uh, you know, echoing what Serona says, you're, you're never trying to decide between this and forensic accounting or or nursing or something else you know if this is passion driven has is for everyone i'm i'm the only one here really from the creative side as far as the instructors go for the most part i mean guillermo you have some experience in that but i was fully on the creative side uh, i from the time i was in 11th grade there was there was no there was no fallback this was it or nothing um, and, um, and, and you really do have to have that attitude, but then it's a real business with real jobs and real careers and real money changing hands. It's, it's, it's not easy, but yes, um, once you understand what's happening on the inside, you're not as intimidated by it. So one of the amazing things about a program like this is, yeah, you absolutely learn what's happening on the inside because you're dealing with people that are on the inside. 
Thank I will also just add to Sebastian, just quickly, Sebastian's question, and there was an anonymous question, right? So if you are a student, yes, you can pursue an internship. That is an opportunity, and it is much easier to land an internship than a, a job. Truthfully, there are more. it's easier to get that. And the truth is, once you have graduated and you're no longer a student, internship opportunities generally go away. So if you do want to pursue an internship, that is something you can do during this program. Um, and the anonymous question was saying, you know, can you like make a career out of this without having to put together lots of different jobs? Yes, you can. Um, it depends on which sector in the industry you want to work in. There are many full-time jobs with benefits at record labels, at publishing companies, at intermediaries that you don't even know exist yet. Um, but depending on the kind of work you want to do, you may prefer to do freelance type work, in which case you are putting together a number of different, you know, it's like a gig economy freelancing work to create your total package. Um, the answer is yes to both of those, depending on the path you pursue in the industry. Thank you, Serana. Rashonda, I know we, <laughs> I promise you we'd be five, five minutes. Thank you. Please go ahead and uh, close us out, please. All right, Professor Elton, uh, Professor Sanchez, Professor Page, Christine, William, and Andrea, thank you so much for that great information. We appreciate your time. Um, to our online audience, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we do have an early admission deadline, which is going to be Monday, uh, March 11th. For joining us tonight as a thank you, we are going to be offering um, a $300 deposit waiver as well as a 50% tuition waiver, okay? So that is awesome. Um, please, if you have any questions, please do uh, reach out to our enrollment advisors. Our number is 1-800-411-2290. And also at the bottom of your screen, if you are ready to go ahead and start your application, please use the QR code. So thank you again for joining us. We appreciate your time. Bye-bye.